he's a small time crook. You want to talk about what's going on? Turned hitman. I don't want to make it look like a, either like a murder robbery or a home invasion. She's a wealthy socialite. There was money involved. Married to one of South Carolina's most successful bankers. Quite frankly, a lot of money. But where these two lives from opposite ends intersect. As I promise I'm going to tell you, very disturbed. It was live sexual presentation. Reveals one unbelievably dark and twisted conspiracy. I need to know I'm loved and I'm going to be loved. I cannot stop thinking about how horrific that would be. Nancy Latham thrived in the well-heeled circles of Charleston, South Carolina. Anyone who was anyone in this picturesque town knew Nancy and her husband, Chris Latham, a top bank executive with a high six-figure salary. But by the time the couple's two daughters, Emily and Madison, had reached their teens, the family had drifted apart. Chris wasn't incredibly involved in our lives. At that point in our lives, my two daughters and myself were sort of acting as a independent unit. And then, the day that changed everything, one Nancy will never forget. It was Madison's spring break week. So Maddie was gonna be in the house every single day, all day that week. I happened to be uh, taking my bath and Madison answered the door and then ran upstairs and said, the police are at the door. They both came in, sat down and said, do you know of anyone that would want to hurt you? And I said, what do you mean hurt me? And they said, would you know of anyone that would want to kill you? It began, cops would tell Nancy, not long before, when a man named Aaron Wilkinson was pulled over by police for, of all things, a simple traffic violation. You know, it was a typical traffic stop, but once he was going to maybe write him a ticket, Aaron started telling him um, about a plot he knew about a murder for hire. And the officer quickly realized he should search the car. And when the officer found the, the gun inside the car, he then arrested Aaron Wilkinson. And once Wilkinson was in custody, did he have a story to tell? What Aaron told the, the local detectives was that he had come down from Kentucky um, at, on the orders of another individual to, to kill a woman. And he said he had paperwork that showed what he was planning to do. So then, who was this supposed target? I just think it's L-A-T-H-A-M. That's right, Nancy Latham. Once investigators started digging into Wilkinson's claims and more specifically that paperwork, they discovered just how meticulously the hit had been planned. Whoever put that together had gone to the extent of saying exactly where she would be at what time so um, she could be killed. And, and obviously that was a concern we had. So some of the things Aaron Wilkinson was saying were, were checking out. And then the next step was really sort of getting the details about who was involved. The feds are brought in and the hitman drops another bombshell. He claims he's not working alone. His partner in crime is this guy, Sammy Yenawan. And Wilkinson tells the feds he's got to check in soon or he'll be in big trouble. Sammy will suspect something is up. I was supposed to come. What time are you supposed to come last night? The feds set up an undercover call between Aaron Wilkinson and Sammy Yanawai. Special Agent Joe Boykin is releasing part of it to Crime Watch Daily. Listen carefully, because feds say it reveals one of the most chilling aspects of the crime. This is an undercover phone call made to an individual known as Sammy. Hello? Can I pop up with him in the car? I don't know what else to do. And I'll call you when it's done. So I'm gonna do it today. As the call reveals, the gunmen have been given the green light to take out anyone who gets in the way of their target. And as authorities were about to learn, that included Nancy's own daughter. Wilkinson said, what should I do if um, somebody's there, if the kids are there? And Yenawine told him, well, it'll make it look better, so go ahead and kill them too. Then, Aaron tells cops it was Sammy who gave him that hit packet in the first place. She came back and he had that, that manila envelope with all, like, the, you know, pretty much all the biographical. And then it had, like, a Google map, um, not satellite imagery, but more just like a, just like a colored map. There's also a, a separate Word document that talks about the type of car she drives, um, the people that live with her, 
I think what it shows is there were multiple ways to commit the, the, the shooting or the murder. During the investigation, authorities also uncovered the disturbing details of how payment for a job well done would break down. If the hit occurred, they were to receive, I think, I believe, I think it was $20,000. But if they made it look like an accident, they would get more money. Regardless, she had to die, and you know, if just a, you know, a robbery gone bad or a carjacking gone bad, that would be fine. Now, with a plot uncovered and one of the hitmen still on the streets, the clock was ticking. Feds had to find Nancy and fast. We had a victim that we didn't know her whereabouts, uh, that we needed to make sure we could find and secure so she was safe. And once they found Nancy and her daughters, there was no time to waste. And they said, well, we've been paid to kill you. And they said, pack a bag. And so we packed a bag. It was like a kick in the stomach. Up next. So far, we hadn't had anybody with any real motive to want to have um, Nancy Latham killed. The hunt is on to find Nancy's conspirators, a trail filled with sex, money, and malice. <laughs>